Good evening, everyone. How's it I'm going? Muted. Oh, you mute. <laughs> the mute always gets <laughs> one of us at least. Yeah. Well, welcome in, everybody. Excited to hang out with you guys for a little bit this evening. Um, got some stuff I wanted to share, which is the five things real estate agents hate that photographers do. I made a YouTube video on this topic, but I love doing the lives because we get to actually talk back and forth about the topics. And my favorite thing ever is when someone disagrees with me because I love to talk about that. Um, and so as I go through these, ask your questions. I'm going to engage with you guys in the chat. Uh, love to answer your specific questions about these. And we're probably going to go a little bit deeper on each of these than the YouTube video did. Um, truthfully, if I would have known some of these, I did naturally, which is great. That helped me grow my business. But if I would have known all of these, I would have grown my business much more quickly. And some of these were like learned through mistakes. Some of these were learned through, you know, just trial and error to get there. Some were big mistakes, frankly. Um, some cost me clients, some cost me thousands of dollars, if not tens of thousands. And so this is some pretty good stuff, not because I came up with it, because I certainly didn't. I learned most of this the hard way. And so I got Kenny on the rep team here with me, who's going to be chopping it up. These are some, <laughs> our favorite thing is when people do stupid stuff that uh, prevents their business from growing, but thinks it helps them grow their business or thinks it, it shows the world that they know their worth or, uh, you know, shows the world that they know they're right. And those things never make you any money. They make you poor. And so on this video, we're going to break those down a little bit. Where's everybody from uh, on this live? I always like to see that. So drop where you're from in the chat. And if you don't mind, drop if you do, if you have a real estate photo business, if you want to start one, that that spectrum, put where you are. I'd love to see that and kind of tailor what we're talking about to that. Oh, nice. Jeremy That's Austin. Cool. Mr. Kenny's also in Austin. Rod, how's it going? Rod's on the rep team and uh, pulling an after hour shift, I guess, hanging out with us in the live. So thanks for being here, Rod. <laughs> Let's see. Richmond, Texas. A lot of Texas so far. New York City, yeah. Canada. Oh, hey, David. How's it going? Reno, Missouri, Ohio. I don't know why I like to see where you guys are from. It's just more fun. Then you seem like real people that we get to talk to, which is cool because I know you guys right. are. Seattle, Florida. Nice. Raleigh. There's like four states everybody's concentrated in. Austin, North Carolina, Florida, and then like a couple of <laughs> Just starting my business. Yeah, post if you guys like where you are in that process. Are you thinking about starting? Do you already have a business? Helps me kind of dial in the content for, um, you know, to be the most beneficial for you because there's different levels of uh, understanding and there's different things that apply at different times in your business. So drop it there. Portugal, you win the distance award, I think, so far. What time is it over there? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, in the early shift, probably it's early in the morning, I would think. 1 a.m. 1 a.m.? Um, okay. Yeah. This was like nine hours ahead or something. Well, uh, thanks yes. for being here. Yeah. Vienna, nice. Also about to launch. Wish you luck. Luck. I wish you hard work is what I'll wish you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> well, we're going to dive into it. Um, this is five things that real estate agents hate that if you do these, they will hurt your business. And the cool thing is if you flip it and you just don't do them, it will help your business. And so I'm going to start with like a super basic one that I have no idea why is such a challenge for people in this industry. Um, and not just in our industry, not in photography, not in media, um, but, you know, just generally in the service sector, home services, service businesses in general, which is showing up late. That is so common in this industry. In fact, some companies go as far as to give you a two hour window when they're going to show up. I understand that helps the business for efficiency. Nobody likes that. In fact, everybody hates that. And so uh, not only is it not the standard in real estate media to give a block time, um, we, when we were building our business, especially in the early phases, when I was getting to talk with clients, cause I was the one shooting, it was so interesting how we had always, we have this rule forever principle, whatever you want to call it, that five minutes early is right on time. And that's something we've always said at Norman Young, we've always tried to do. And we're very rarely late. Like when we would be five, six, seven minutes late, I was like worried about it. That's how on time we were. And Maybe that's overkill, but we heard so many times from clients that they love how we're always on time because they don't have to sit there and make small talk with their clients. They don't run late because we were late. And so that's just one of the easiest things you can do to make your clients not have a pain point with working with you. You're just, it shows, it's, it's like one of those things when you're in business, what you want to do is set expectations and then meet them. And so when you say two o'clock is the slot and you show up at 205, you, the first thing you did was not meet expectations. And that's not a good thing. So show up early. Here's the cool thing about this. Nobody cares 
Nobody minds if you show up five minutes early and some people mind if you're late. Not everybody minds if you're late, but some people do. So why not choose the option nobody cares about, right? Yeah, Jeremy, I love that one. If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. Yeah. Um, also, you're representing the agent. So it goes, uh, they're going to love that because they're, they're sellers, a home buyer. Uh, they're going to see that they're, they're responsible. And so whoever's on their team, because you're essentially representing their team. Um, that's why you always want to dress nice. Uh, appropriately to what their their brand is but yeah you're representing the agents so being early is uh, goes a long ways for them yeah and speaking yeah. of that, that that's another so the, it was titled five things real estate agents hit their six and the sixth one that i have written down is dress poorly it, these are like things that are just they sound really basic right but how easy are those both to control especially the how you dress to a shoot I'm not saying you have to show up in a suit that'd probably be weird but put a little effort in how you look uh, there's so many times where there's a big competitor of ours in Granbury, Texas, where we started, um, who before I had my drone license, he did. And so the agent would hire me to shoot the photos and him to shoot the drone. And I would show up and this guy would show up like in basketball shorts and flip flops. And he just looked like a mess. And we got all of his clients over time. Right. And so there's so much you can't control in business. Why not control the stuff you can and just dress nicely? So those are like the easy no brainers. Um, well, most of you think they're no brainer. There's a few that are probably like really i should show up on time and so hopefully that this stuck out to you um and we're not even to the ones where you can argue with me yet so i was those are the fun ones um okay the one this is one that photographers always like to argue about photo rights so we have seen so many photographers make a mess of their business by being right so as you know at least in the us when you take you know a photo unless you've signed the rights away via some sort of contract or you know copyright transfer agreement you own the rights to the photos when you take that shutter, right? Well, what happens a lot in real estate photography is that the agents have no idea that that's how this works, right? They're like, I paid for a shoot. I own the photos. I can do with them what I want. And so you'll have a couple of scenarios play out, right? You'll have one where the agent pays you to shoot the photos. They don't sell the house. And then another agent takes over the listing. And the agent who you shot for is like, hey, I could probably recap some of my money if I just sell these to the new agent, right? So they'll sell the photos to the new agent. Are they legally allowed to do that? Well, no, unless you sign an agreement that gives them the copyright, because what they don't know is that you just license, license them the photos um, to use for the duration of that listing or whatever you license them for, right? Well, that doesn't make sense to agents that they don't own the photos. So you have kind of two options here. You could go the way that you're right and show them and tell them that they can't do that and only you can sell the photos. And sure, maybe there's a time for that, right? But we just see so many photographers do that and miss out on a client. So my like thesis on real estate media is that you just want to get as many clients as you can, because the more clients you have, the more money that you make. And so it just becomes a game of how do I acquire the most amount of clients, right? There's two ways to do that. And you should use both of them. Number one is you get new clients, right? Number two is you don't lose existing clients. Both of those will result in you having more clients, therefore more money in your business. And so our approach when that happens is, you know, rather than call the agent who's using them, who's not supposed to be and be like, Hey, you, you have to, you know, pay me to use those photos and making a big stink about it. Then they're going to say, Oh, well, I bought them from the other agent. So then you pissed off that agent. Most of the time we've seen the text messages that a lot of photographers share and post in the group. Like they just won something um, where the agents mad at them. Never an agent being mad at you is a good idea. Right? So just keep that in the back of your mind. So that's one side. You just mess with the agent who's never heard of you before. And their first interaction with you is you trying to get money out of them for something that you did has already been done. Right? So cool. So that's number one. Number two is then you found out the agent sold and you call your client who's been paying you and be like, Hey, you can't do that. Right? Even if they agree and even if they pay you, you just irritated them a little bit. I would argue that the 200 bucks you made for doing that was not worth souring any bit the relationship on either front. So how we do it in my business, and we made a ton of money by doing this, is that agent who sold them, we don't care. It doesn't make any difference. The agent who bought them, we will call them and be like, hey, I just want to let you know that those were the photos we shot. I'm glad you like them. If you'd like us to shoot your next listing, we'd be more than happy to. Here's how you can get in contact with us. Here's everything we do. That is such a good way to build your business, not tear it down by trying to be right. And so with us, uh, photo rights, we just don't, we do not treat them like something that needs to be defended because it doesn't, because that's not how we make our money in this industry. In real estate media, you make your money when you shoot the house. You don't make recurring money in the back end. And if you do, it's small compared to the, the money you can make on the front end. Like 
I don't know any photographers that have a seven figure business licensing photos that they've shot for real estate agents, but I know multiple photographers who have a seven figure business shooting new business because they focus on what actually makes the money. Um, yeah, also, when it starts around, so whether it be a new client that you've never met or your current client that you just create, you know, you just burn a bridge, um, they're going to start telling other agents, like, I wouldn't use that person just because they're so and so and uh, they're always trying to get money out of you. I don't know, just whatever it may be. And so you're going to start losing future clients that you, you would have if you would have been right. Yeah. And that's like the exact opposite of the type of compounding we want right? Like we want people to like us so much they refer us. And so getting negative, I don't want to use you as like working against your referrals. And in this business, referrals are how you grow, you know, once you get your initial client base, like that's going to be most of your revenue is from referrals in the future. And so um, it's really important to, you got to, you got to think long-term, right? You never want to let like a small amount of money today cost you a relationship. There's a quote that you've probably heard, which is, you want to get people to know you, like you, and trust you, right? And if you can get them to do those three things, they will be a client of yours for as long as you maintain that, right? Especially the trust part. And so if you think about it like that, if every agent in your area knew you, liked you, and trusted you, you'd be, you'd have more business than you could possibly handle, right? You'd have a massive team. You'd have to keep growing. Um, so it's like, okay, no is the first stage. Maybe that comes via referral. Maybe that comes via you reaching out to them if you use the Instagram method that we teach. The next stage is like. No one likes you when you call them and tell them that they owe money for photos that they don't understand why they owe money for. That's really irritating. And so obviously it makes sense, but what I would encourage you to think about if you're someone that's like coming from the photography side of things, you're going to have a lot of beliefs that are not going to serve you in real estate media. And frankly, probably don't serve you in your existing business. That's why the phrase, the starving artist exists. And that's why most photographers are poor because they have a lot of these things that prevents them from building a business because they think like an artist. So um, the more you can not think like an artist, the better. Um, next one is have bad systems. So mm -hmm. it's really easy to accidentally put together a, like a Frankenstein of systems. So you have like Dropbox or Pixie set for delivering photos. You invoice them with QuickBooks or Stripe or some other invoicing platform. They book you through some calendar set. And it's like, there's no straightforward system. The nice thing about being in real estate media in 2024 is there are a bunch of awesome systems. We use Spiro. Absolutely love it. You can check it out at Spiro.media but it centralizes all of that for you. So the cool thing is not only does it offer a place for you to deliver photos, to invoice your clients, to they can download their shoots from there. It also allows them to schedule in real time without talking to you based upon your actual schedule. So if they're at a listing appointment and you're at a shoot, normally that's a time where they can't get something confirmed, but it doesn't matter if you're at a listing appointment or you're, excuse me, you're at a shoot. They can book with their client at that listing appointment right now because the system allows. So anyway, there are plenty of options besides Spiro if you don't want to use that. We recommend Spiro. We're part of the Spiro team lately and helping them build their business over there and you know guide where they take it. So I really having, like Spiro. Uh, go for it. Oh, go for it. Uh, I was just going to say like having a proper system software, like everything, it just makes you seem like a, a legitimate business, not, not a business that you're doing on the side, especially if your goal is trying to make it full time. Um, we talked about this in our, in our group earlier today, but um, yeah, having the right software will, you know, even from the very beginning sets you apart from other com competitors and also like, sets you for the future for when you start getting a lot of clients that way you can get the, the newer clients uh, or your current clients used of your software immediately rather than later. Yeah. Kenny, how do I change this? So we're like full screen. This look, Oh, oh. look at that. How much better is that? Is that better? I, I don't know. know. It felt a little it weird. <laughs> I feel like it doesn't matter, but also we get to have fun because it's after five. So we're not working that hard. Neither here nor there. You know, that's probably better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, this kind of goes with number four, which is don't take forever to confirm a shoot. Um, if you have a good system, you won't have to do that, right? You can do it right then you have good systems, but taking that a step further, uh, nobody likes to wait. And so if you can be fast with everything you do, agents will love working with you. And if you're slow, they will hate working with you. Actually, they won't hate working with you. They just won't work with you. And so, um, you know, real estate's a fast paced industry. When they try to, so when the, one of the biggest things you can maintain, like that clients will love is availability. The more available you are, the more your clients are going to like that. Because if you think about where they are in their business, right? They do all this prospecting, they do outreach, maybe they run ads, whatever. So they've got a client who's like, Hey, I want to list my house with you, right? Well, at the moment when that house is ready to list, when they call you, they're waiting on you so they can list the house so they can get a commission check. So like you are standing between them and their check. 
And the longer you make them wait, the more likely their sellers get cold feet or think you're not the agent's not professional or have time to have something come up. The agent wants to get that property listed and get that property sold and get that commission check. And so the faster you can be available, the better for your clients. One of the easiest ways to lose clients is be booked out two weeks. You do that, that is a that is a death sentence for your business. Like you really want to maintain availability. And there's multiple ways you can do that, right? If you don't want to hire people, you can just raise your prices and lose your cheaper clients. If you want to hire people, you just hire people. But the biggest thing you can do is everything. There, there is nothing uh, more impactful to your business than just doing everything quickly. So like I said, getting them booked quickly, getting the photos back to them first thing the next morning. When I first started shooting real estate, like 48 hour turnaround was fast. Like 72 hours was more than norm, at least in our market. And there was actually funny enough companies when I first started who you had to pay extra for to get your photos back within 48 hours. Otherwise it'd be 72. And so we did 24 hours and I'm not at all saying we changed the industry. We were just one of the people that decided faster was better. And so we did 24 hour turnaround and our clients mm -hmm. love that. And now we do next morning turnaround. So in many cases it's faster than 24 hours. And, um, you know, hundred percent, the more you can do available, more you good availability you can have the better. Um, now great question. So this is kind of, you know, along those lines. Well, if that's the case, how do you do this when you have a full-time job? You have to understand that when you have a full-time job or you don't have availability to do this full-time, you will not be able to work with every client, but that's okay, right? The goal is to get you something to get started. Yeah, maybe 25% or 50% of clients won't want to work with you because it's going to, you know, you don't have a great availability, but you don't need that many clients to be able to replace your full-time job. So, you know, if, if you do the math on it, we've done this a lot before, but if your average shoot is $275, we call it average order value, it should be between like 250 and 300. So um, for easy math, let's say it's 250. And your expenses are $50 a shoot if you include editing and like whatever else, right? So worst case scenario, you're making like $200 a shoot if you're doing things right. How many of those shoots do you need to replace your job? Theoretically, not many, especially if they take about an hour, right? And so if you look at someone that makes $5,000 a month, uh, what is that, 25 shoots? I don't know if I'm doing yeah, that. I mean, like in order to do $5,000 a month, they need 16 shoots out of 250 uh Average order with profit, it's like if you if you want to make five thousand in profit at the yeah. at a really bad average order value, it's twenty five shoots. It's like okay, so you could replace your job in twenty five shoots, and that's profit, not revenue. You're making more revenue than that, right? And so, let's say you can do four shoots on a weekend each weekend. Well, that's four times four; it's sixteen right there. You only have to fit in nine shoots over four weeks. And that's not that hard. You could do one shoot after work, before work, whatever, and replace your full-time $5,000 a month income, right? Then quit. So that's always been our take. That's not the topic of this video, but like I would challenge you to replace your income before you quit your job because then not only do you have two incomes in that period, so you're able to stack up a lot of money and you start to build some wealth, but then when you do quit, it's way easier because you've already replaced your income. It doesn't have to be scary. Um, do you guys know if Spiro allows you to set up, schedule the delivery of media? Yes. Uh, I don't know about scheduling, but I know. Oh, I see what your question is. I don't know. You'd have to ask them. Use the chat bubble on their website. Todd will answer. Um, make sure to take into account self-employment taxes. Though. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing about being self-employed. You actually pay less in taxes than you do when you're employed. So I'm assuming that you make a 5K salary at your job, right? That's not your take home. That's before taxes. And so I'm saying 5k take home in your job, 5k here, you're probably going to actually make more than your job. That's the great thing. A lot of people are like, oh, you pay more taxes because your employer covers half of your self-employment taxes. Yes. But all the things you can write off that you already buy <laughs> negate that and you end up making more money. So yeah, I mean, awesome. Like if your goal is to double that, perfect. Like there are people, there's people we've worked with in coaching that have this like burn the bridges mentality where they'll straight up just quit their job. And that works. That's just stressful. Like for me, at least not interested. Um, but they also grew their business faster than me. So there's multiple different ways to do this, but, uh, I'm just, you know, a little bit, um, I like to be a little bit careful because I don't like being poor. And so I would prefer to make double the money and work harder rather than make less money and not, um, cause there's nothing worse than not. Ha so it's like everybody, when they're working hard, they're like, man, I wish I had some time off. Like, I've never met someone that would rather be stressed about money and have time off than work hard and not be. It's like a, it sounds great until you're, you have nothing to do today and no money and you're behind. Like that sucks. And so I don't like that. Um, can you write off your car? Yeah, it really depends. Um, there's a lot of factors. You can write off mileage. You can write off actual expenses. You can accelerate. There's like so much you have to ask the CPA, but yes, generally you can.
Anyway, is that all five? Did we do five? I feel like we did four. Oh, <laughs> the last one is my favorite one. So we had um, a competitor who uh, they, I've actually heard this multiple times. Like I'm trying to put in my mind, like figure out one, one competitor that I know did this, but I've heard this multiple times where people in photography businesses are unwilling to help prep the house at all when they get there. So these photographers or photo businesses, they have this policy where when they get to the house, it needs to be photo ready and they won't touch anything. And some even take it a step further and lie because they're too scared to say they don't want to help. And they say their insurance won't let them move anything, which is so stupid because I've never seen that ever in an insurance policy before. It's very dumb. Insurance is very cheap anyway. So change your policy if that's the case. Um, but it, it's so interesting how if you, you know, a lot of people will have this not my job attitude. And so they'll get to a shoot and it's like, they're, they're, they're thinking they're a photographer and it's like, yeah, I mean, it's not really your job to clean the house, but if you make it your job, you'll make a lot more money. And so I chose to make it my job at our business. We always block out, you know, 15 or so extra minutes to prepare the house. Sometimes the house is perfectly ready to go and we'll just do some minor tweaks. Sometimes we spend the full 15 minutes and occasionally when we have time, we'll go out of our way and spend a ton of time, um, prepping the house. And those usually just, we're doing that more for just to help somebody. You know, if it's a bad situation, you run into those sometimes. So we like to help clean the house if we can. And maybe someone passed away and there's a single, you know, spouse is left or something. And it's just like you, awesome. Like you can do that and just be a good person. Right. But also it gets you a lot of referrals. And so I think having generally a, not my job attitude, um, is the fastest way to, uh, have, I'm trying to think how to phrase this in a not have money way. If it's not your job, you're going to make less money. So make it your job and you'll make more money. Um, if the house will take hours to get photo ready, there's only so much we can do, right? So like, let's say we have, it's 12 o'clock. I get to a shoot, right? I know that I need to leave by one to get to my next shoot on time. And it, you know, 12, 15 rolls around. We're behind schedule. 12, 30 rolls around. I'm going to tell the agent, I'm pulling aside and be like, hey, I have to leave here at one to be at my next shoot on time. I'm going to do as much as I can now. I can either, you know, shoot it as it is and get it done, or we can get a bunch of it perfect, shoot that, and I can come back later. So like we always just go out of our way to accommodate without being late for the next one. You know, some, if the house is hours to get photo ready, it's more about making it as good as you can in the time you have, not having this weird attitude of you won't touch anything. Yeah, this is a hundred percent how this age, this, uh, industry works. Like you'll get so many referrals if, you know, and this is great because it's your mom. Um, and so she's definitely going to refer you for, uh, you know, selfish reasons because she likes you, but even if she wasn't your mom, you'd get a ton of referrals. Um, you don't want to rely on referrals only, but you don't need a website. So in the workshop, it's linked in my bio here on YouTube and Instagram. It's free. I talk about the Instagram method. That is what we use. And we help our coaching clients use to get more clients, um, covers it at a very high level view. Obviously, if you want us to help you with the process and like, you know, walk you through every step, you want to apply for coaching and talk with Rod, Carl, or Philippe on my team. And I encourage you to do that if you're serious about real estate media. Um, but that workshop will give you a high level overview of what to expect. Also, as for the website, uh, that's a, every single business owner. I don't care at the industry. I just feel like everybody gets stuck on the website and then they take months to start their businesses because of their website. Um, at Norman Young, <clears throat> I don't think any of the clients really go through the web. Like all of our clients are through referrals. And so... Um, yeah, they put our order form on our, that's like, they go order. Order. They that's order. It. Yeah. yeah. And you know, what's funny. So in coaching, we don't recommend in coaching, anybody build a website until we're doing at least $10,000 a month in revenue. Like you have your Instagram set up and that kind of acts as your website and we show you how to do that. And then you put your order form in your Instagram bio. And like, that's the system you need right there. A lot yeah. of people spend time on a website because like, so like, if you ask someone, what do you do to start a business? They're going to be like, get a bank account, get an LLC and build a website. It's like, well, what is that? And like get business. Card. It's like stuff that doesn't actually do anything. So like, so I said that the other day, um, I said, you know, we don't recommend until 10 K a month and, uh, Mike and coaching, I think it was Mike. He was like, ah, oh, I'm doing 25 K a month and I still don't have a website. And so uh, there's this phrase that I really like, which is what you have to do as a business owner, especially as a small business owner, but just in general is you have to use your limited resources against unlimited opportunities. So there's a million things you can do in your business, but a good business owner, business owner that makes money is able to say out of all these things that I could do, what's the most effective one that I should be doing? What should I be spending the time on? And I can't justify a time when the website ever makes sense as the highest priority. Now, sure, throw one together eventually, right? Norman Young, my business has a website. Do we need one? Honestly, not really. It's just, we have one because we also, do things wrong on occasion, right? So I just really don't think you need a website. David, how's it going? 
Speaking of that, that is all for the prepared stuff. So it is your turn to ask questions. We got 20 minutes or so to hang out, ask questions. Uh, if you haven't yet talked to my team, highly encourage you to go to replaunch.com slash apply. Um, our coaching program is pretty cool. So the way we have it structured is it's custom to you, um, your market. So we, we look at your market, you know, make sure that it can uh, support a real estate photo business. And then we'll actually guarantee you results based upon that. And so even if you're not like 100% in, like, talk with Rod Carl or Philippe on my team. Um, when you do that application, you'll get a link to book with them. And like, that is what they do for a living all day, every day is talk to people, help people figure out if it's the right opportunity for them. So highly encourage you to do that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So uh, people say this, but like, how are you getting them from your website, David? Are you directing them there? Or like, what do you feel that your website's doing that your Instagram plus your order form wouldn't do? So I'm not saying a website can't get you clients. My thing is just out of all the things you can do, I think if you do the Instagram method and you spend time on Instagram, that's going to get you more clients faster. It's that it, it goes back to like kind of what I said, limited resources, unlimited opportunity, but also, um, you know, our thoughts on client acquisition are there are like thousands of ways that you can get clients, right? So you could do the Instagram method. You could cold call, you could send flyers, you could visit offices, you could let a balloon go with a note at the end. Like that's a way it just sucks. Right. So like that's illustrates the point. There's a million ways to get clients. The thing that we focus on is like, okay, out of all those ways to get clients, what is the most effective per hour of time put in? We have yet to find something better than the Instagram method. And so our approach has been like, okay, on your website, like I believe 100% that it got you clients. Um, and I'm not just roasting you specifically, David, I'm just talking about like a broader point. Like I believe it got website or clients, but how many hours did it take you to build that? And how many clients would you have got if you instead spent those hours in your Instagram and the Instagram method? That's how we balance everything. Uh, we add sales tax on top of the price. So there's the base price and then it adds sales tax. Do you have anything on how to shoot videos? The pictures seem pretty straightforward, but not try to get it up to speed on shooting videos. Uh, Jeremy, I think I have a video on my YouTube about that somewhere. I mean, we obviously teach it in coaching, like step-by-step, -step, but if you're looking for a free resource, I'm pretty sure I have one on my YouTube. Scroll I mean, back. Maybe biggest tip that i would say is just to simplify your process uh don't try to look for i don't know like super beautiful movie cinematic videos i mean uh the, the reason why we've grown so much is because we just simplify our process like on every service that we've done and so what i recommend is just doing a, a bunch of push-in shots really starting in the beginning and then a few parallax shots maybe you can put in a few detail shots but uh yeah just simplify a video and uh, go watch that youtube video that you guys posted this is a a really good question, Daniel. Given that everyone's images look the same, would you have more success offering free video? I'll let Dan Kennedy and quote, he who can spend the most to acquire client wins. Um, first of all, I love that, that saying and that quote, like something we think about a lot. Um, yeah, so definitely there's no just photos. I mean, we talk about that, but like when we're working with people and coaching, we recommend sweetening the pot all the time and adding more and more. So photos, aerials, other stuff like that, video, absolutely. Um, a lot of people have used like social media reels successfully in coaching. So yeah, absolutely. Feel free to experiment with it. And also the cool thing is, and I think you're kind of like getting to this or hinting at it. The, if you, like, if you're able to get someone to try out your whole, like every service you offer, right. Or at least your biggest package, like they're going to be exposed to more services, meaning they're probably going to be a higher average order value client when they come back. It doesn't always work out that way, but a lot of times it does. The Instagram method, none of them are even answering, even if I just say hi. Uh, excuse me. If you say hi, they will definitely not answer you because that sounds like a spam robot. Um, if you haven't watched the workshop that's linked in my bio here on YouTube or Instagram, watch that. But basically, it's a three-step process, but there's like a fourth prerequisite, which is your profile has to be set up right. And so you need to have a profile that has a mixture of real estate shots um, with houses or videos or whatever, and then like pictures of you with your backstory and everything. We spend a lot of time carefully crafting that in coaching. Um, so that's how we set that up. So put some effort into your bio, right? Put some effort into your profile. Your profile picture should be a picture of you, not your logo, for example. Then once you have that set up, it's not just straight to the DM. It's follow the agent first, engage with them, comment on their posts thoughtfully. Don't spam emojis. Uh, react to some of their stories, start building relationship, then go for the DM. If you want to sweeten the pot with the DM, make it more effective, you send a text DM plus a video DM. Um, that's what we recommend. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things like we have one. And it doesn't hurt to have one. It's just like, especially when you're um, you're doing less than ten thousand a month, is when we recommend not having one. It just doesn't seem like the highest priority. Since taking over the Instagram method for my VA, I'm getting a twenty five percent response rate. That is incredible. That's a high. <laughs> Send as many messages as you can while you got it working like that, sir. Yeah, if if you don't like carefully and properly train a VA too, they're not going to do it well. So like theoretically, a VA can do everything you can, but there is something like more intention. If you do it more intentionally, you get more results. Congrats on that. 25% though. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. 10, we consider 10% good just as a baseline. You probably know that, but 25% is great. Let's see. Uh, what other questions do you guys have? Uh, let's see. what is your guarantee with your coaching program it depends on where you are where your business is at like size wise what you're looking to achieve um we have to talk with you and because we can't just guarantee any anybody like without knowing you some people are just more committed than others so that's why we have uh carl philippe and rod available to talk with you yeah jordan absolutely the best way to do that is either dm me on instagram at it's eli jones or dm Kenny, I'm going to move this so you can see his username. Where? Why is it not popping up, Kenny? Oh, we got the banner going. Does that get rid of it? That's crazy. Oh, yeah, there it is. At, it's Kenny Benjamin. Find him on Instagram. DM him. Yeah, yeah. this is the problem. Instagram will, uh, after a while, <laughs> block you temporarily. Uh, what other questions you guys have? Yeah, 10% response rate is normal, David. It's actually like decent 10%. I mean, think about it this way. So we, we have never seen someone ever that has a hundred clients or more who does not make six figures a year. Right. And so does that mean people with 50 clients don't make six figures? Yeah, of course they do sometimes, but we've never seen someone with 103 clients not make a hundred grand. And so if you think about that, all that means is that a six figure business is a thousand DMS away. And like, that's not even that much. Like a lot of people, Oh, that's a ton. It's like, no, that's like in life. That's easy. A thousand DMS. Like, come on. That's standing between you and a different life. Um, you have to do those DMs right. You can't just spam out a thousand and expect it to work. But like, yeah, definitely. Uh, what is the best selling add on than photo video? It fluctuates for a while. It was 3d tours. Um, now it's probably video, but I would imagine like, and some of these are like video or photo type services. So like drone photos are a big seller. Um, floor plans, floor plans. 3D tours just like got kind of not, people don't use them as much anymore. Do incentivize agents to refer with discounts or let it happen naturally? Yeah, um, in, in Spiro, there's a feature. It can You can give referral credit and a referral link. So yeah, I think we give $100 in mm -hmm. credit if agent refers somebody. Uh, let's see. Is it normal for an agent to use several different photographers? Yeah, I mean, not all. It's not like normal to where they all do it, but like, yeah, we have our clients that do that. I think they just go off like availability a lot of times or I have no idea. Maybe they use a cheaper photographer for cheaper listings. That's hard to say. Uh, let's see how much does the weather affect your business? Um, it depends on what type of weather. So like we, we operate in Texas, if it snows, Texas like shuts down. Um, but that's not going to be the case if you're in like Nebraska, right? It's probably just gonna be like a normal day. Um, when it's rainy, we'll have probably 20% of our shoots cancel. If it's like thunderstorm tornado, more like half, um, we let the clients decide whether to cancel because a lot of times, you know, in the past and you know, I did this and then we've seen other companies do it. They'll like go out of their way to cancel. And it's like, sometimes the agents don't care. They just want to get the house listed. So we leave it up to them. We do sky replacements, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, ultimately I think the best thing you can do is just like tell your clients that it would be better if they waited, but you're happy to do it today. Um, and also I don't want to have like a zero revenue day. So like we'll do it and we'll sky replace for free. Uh, Todd was talking this week on the podcast about setting 90 day goals. What are your own and what are great ones for real estate media company to have? Yeah. So with Norman and Young, um, I don't run the business daily. So I do a leadership meeting once a week and the leadership team there is responsible for doing that, for setting goals and growing the business. I've told them specifically that I want to focus on my coaching business on real estate photographer pro. And that's a privilege I have because I grew my business to the point where I can do that. So I have 90 day goals for this business. That won't much apply to you. Um, with Norman and Young, I let them do their thing in regards to that. And then I try to give them some direction in the meetings. Um, I also am not, uh, I, I agree with what Todd's saying, and I'm not saying me, my way is the right way. I think, you know, Todd's, uh, he's built a bigger business than me. So he's definitely worth listening to. Um, 
I am not a very goal driven person personally. Like to me, I'm pretty consistent. So I just get up and I do what's in front of me. I probably should have more concrete goals, but I've never been able to predict where my business will go. And I think, um, I don't know. I think everybody has their own way of getting them to get work done uh, and move towards you know the future. And so for me, it doesn't involve setting goals concretely. Do I, I have a goal that, here? Yes. Uh, what were you going to say, Kenny? I mean, I think like we have goals, but it's kind of like depending on what we're doing, which is right now it's coaching. And so we may have like different things to hit every single month or week, or if we, we're doing an event, like how many people do we want coming? Like things like that. Those are our type of goals, but yeah. Carlos is, uh, he's being a little, a little sad that I didn't answer a European question. I see it now though. So I will answer it for you. Uh, yeah. I mean, there definitely are differences. We don't coach people in European markets. So I have no idea. The market works differently. Occasionally we'll take someone after we do a little research, like UK, um, Ireland, that, you know, whatever you want to call that whole collection of places, uh, <laughs> works pretty much the same, but then in some countries like in France, I'm pretty sure there's not exclusive listing. So we stick with what we know. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have to do some work on that. I would imagine people are taking real estate photos. It's just, we don't spend time coaching on that. Let's see. You reach out to clients that haven't booked in a while. Um, yes, yeah, so we have VIP lists. And so those are the clients that we pay the most attention to if they don't book. Absolutely. Um, we probably should reach out to the other clients more, but we just mainly focus on getting new clients. A lot of times, like if they haven't booked us in a while, like, okay, here's why we do this. Ultimately, I, I used to do that more when our business was smaller. And like every time I'd reach out when I thought a client was using another photographer or hadn't used this in a while, it, they'd be like, oh yeah, like the reason I used another photographer in the last one was because like the seller knew somebody who was a photographer and insisted I use them. And I'm like, well, now I feel like a little bit of an idiot for calling. Um, but the other side of it is like, if they haven't used me in a while, they don't have a listing and they're probably not excited about being poor. And so me calling to be like, Hey, I noticed you haven't used this in a while. They're like, yeah, I know. I also haven't gotten paid in a while, dog. So that's how I think about it. <laughs> how when do you use AI? Uh, I mean, not very much right now. I mean, I'm a big fan of chat GPT, but, uh, you know, we don't really use much AI stuff right now. Let's see. Uh, do the photographers at Norman Young decide which photos are delivered to the client? Do they send all that were shot? Yes, they do. So they have a limit. So if we shoot like a 40 photo package, they're allowed to send up to 45. Um, and so they pick which 45 and those are the ones we deliver to the client. What else do you guys have? Your internet's still on Kenny. I'm very surprised. Kenny has got like, I keep, looking, I keep like checking my phone or like the cameras to see like when they're going to knock on the door and stuff. I'm like, oh. <laughs> They're going to wait till, Hey, if they do it now, it was mission successful. Cause we've already been live for 40 minutes. And so, yeah, yeah. my, uh, internet's getting fixed. I guess they got to rewire the cables or something just for people not knowing, just to look on. <laughs> we just had fun with, uh, trying to do coaching calls with the internet cutting out. Anyway, what are the questions you guys have? You got five more minutes to hang out. If you haven't applied for coaching, go do it. Um, we have a big event coming up called vision 2024 next week. And so if you want a spot, with the team, you want to do it before the event because their schedules will be packed after with people who are interested. So grab your slot if you want to get started in our January cohort. Uh, would you ever grow Norman and Young in different cities? Yeah, so I made a, a decision and the, it was more of a personal decision than a business decision. I wanted to do something different. So Norman and Young is a great business. It runs itself now. And I'm someone who likes to do new things. And so I created Rep as my way. I created my coaching business as my way of expanding my um, real estate media business and scaling it. I decided that rather than do it in different markets, I wanted to teach people how to do it. Ultimately, it kind of goes with my goals for the future too. I think ownership is a good thing. And I like getting people into ownership rather than just growing my business. And it works great for me financially. And it's great for people who go through the program. And so it's a win-win. Like long-term, I really want to build an online trade school of some sort. And so rep is kind of like my first version of that is helping people get into this business. So it fits more what I want to be doing. But yeah, I mean, uh, Todd, who's on our coaching team and he's the owner of Spiro, um, he has multiple states, a ton of markets and 24 photographers. So you definitely can grow the business. They do 12,000 shoots. I think last year was a little over 12,000 shoots, which is crazy. Like <laughs> for everybody that's like, can't even contextualize how big that is. So if you take 12,000, right, which is the number of shoots they did, and you divide that by every single day of the year, that means on average... 32 shoots that includes Christmas day, every Sunday, which they don't shoot. 
Um, I'm pretty sure they shoot Saturday, but I don't know. So let's assume they don't. It's like 265 days. So 12,000 shoots divided by 250, let's call it. That's an average of 48 houses a day that his team is shooting, which is crazy. And the, the best part is Brad, or, uh, uh, Todd, like we got Brad stuck in my head because he's another big business. Todd does not even have the biggest business around. Brad, another guy has an even bigger business. So it's crazy. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, can teaching others be competition for Norman and Young? Yeah, I mean, what's that? I mean, I was gonna say it's funny because uh, we we teach like three people in our area. <laughs> There's so much business to go around that it, we just we don't see it that way. You know, we're kind of abundance thinking. There's plenty of business, so yeah. I mean, theoretically it does, but it's not a problem. There's so many clients, so many agents. Uh, let's see. Can we get coaching if we live outside of the U.S.? So default yes in canada yes in australia and new zealand yes in the united states if you're in any other country they can talk with you but it's very infrequent that we accept somebody that's not from those because we can't promise you results and that's important to us to hit our goals um come in austin might be teaching me soon we'd love to jeremy we have another client in austin right now uh why what carlos daniel go for it <laughs> let's see see if i missed any while we're waiting you know what's funny i genuinely have no idea on this one because every time we get a camera or our photographer messes it up i gotta ask jared jared yeah. runs norman and young he's the ceo he's on our coaching team and uh i'm not very technical with that kind of stuff okay thoughts on following up with agents who've requested pricing but not book yeah absolutely follow up and offer a free shoot 100 percent. like my perspective is always anything that like okay Think of your business income like a bucket, right? And the more water you get in that bucket, the more money you're making. And think of each client like a little hose faucet, right? So every time you get a new client, you like crack it on. Now, would you pay to like turn on that faucet? Yes. And so anytime you have the chance to offer a free shoot, it is a good idea in my opinion, because we want as many of those faucets filling the bucket as possible. That way, if one of them shuts down, you still got a ton more. Um, so yeah. Also show your enthusiasm. So when you're reaching out or trying to follow up, don't say like, hey, I'm following up on this. Just say like, hey, Daniel, I'm looking forward to working with you. Here's the thing. I'd love to show you the value that I can bring to you. So I'd love to offer you the first shoot for free. How does that sound for you? And then just let them answer. Just like, just show your excitement that you want them to, uh, you want to work with them. Coaching is only for those who can commit full time or for someone like me who wants to start after working on the weekend. So the only goal with coaching the only thing you have to be, I mean, besides like our, we have a three process, three step process, but besides that you need to be wanting to take it full time. Most people who start in coaching do not, do not have the ability to go full time. They have a job and we work with them around that job to replace their income before they quit. So yeah. you don't have to be able to go full time, but you have to want to, if your goal is to make 2000 bucks a month on the side, that's not who coaching's for. Um, it's going to start that way, but then the goal is to take you full time. So that's how we look at that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just different. Like the market is not, there's not exclusive listings. There's just different. It makes it, it's different. And so if it's different and we don't have experience, I'm not able to teach you something that I don't have experience in. And that'd be a waste of your money. And um, that's not what I'm in business to do. Speaking of that, back to back with this FYI from Europe, used all your resources, found to start the business. December was a 10K month. Doesn't mean you can't do it in Europe 100%. So, um, Carlos, if you want to do it, like just because we don't offer coaching there does not mean you can't build the business, right? Um, so, you know, don't let that stop you. Uh, Jerry said, I'm just going to try to get started on my own and then I'll look into coaching. I understand wanting to do this. I wish I would have had coaching from day one. So that's what I can tell you. You know, from a mindset standpoint, I think that's kind of basically saying I want to struggle first and then have to redo everything and restart when I do coaching, just so you know. Again, that's not me just trying to push you to do coaching. It's just what I wish someone would have told me when I was starting. So I like to pass that on. And whether that means coaching with me or not, it doesn't matter. Have somebody who's been there help you. It makes the process so much easier. You don't have to like undo all the stuff you do wrong. Uh, let's see. But well, also one more thing on that is you only have one reputation. And so, you know, what happens if you go out there and you do a bunch of bad work for 10 agents, now you have 10 agents who don't really like you talking about you. And so that's why I think it's good to start from the beginning. I'm not saying you can't do it, Jeremy. I did it without coaching. It just sucked. And it took me years to build a good business. So let's see. 
I'm just getting started. Sorry for the new question. No worries. Uh, what are the typical things you have to reschedule for? Uh, mostly if the homeowners aren't ready. So like the agent wants to get it done and the homeowner maybe is like, oh, I'm not quite ready. Like, or they had something come up or they got sick. So that's pretty much it. Or like something broke at the house and they want to fix it before you shoot. That'd be like the first couple most common. And then weather, I would say, um, for agents that want to wait till it's sunny. But once I, once again, like you let them reschedule that, uh, for you. Like you don't want to be the one that cancels the shoot because of whatever reason. Yeah. I actually lost a client one time because it was a rainy day and I was building a fence at a house that I had bought. Um, and I didn't want to, like, I was almost done with the fence and then I, I like ran out of time and I was gonna have to go to the shoot and it was raining. And so I basically was like, no, I can't do it when it's raining. And then she never booked with me again after that. It was a regular client. I was an oh. idiot. Uh, let's see. Another question about your first course back in the day got me started. I'm eight years in the one man show and hit 250 K in 23. Dang. Congrats. <laughs> awesome. Is that, oh yeah. You said one man show doing 250. You're busy, dude. Jeez. Let's see. What's your personal plan for the future? Coaching is great, but any future plans? Yeah. I mean, you know, for the next few years, full on in my coaching business. It's my main priority. Um, we're growing the business rapidly because we're getting people good results. And so I want to learn the ins and outs of coaching and learn how to get people results because eventually I'd like to build an online trade school, kind of like a college alternative where people can go to learn how to build a business of varying types. So right now I teach people real estate media. Um, but yeah, I appreciate the question, but I got a solid three, four years left in me coaching, building that business. It's like, I think a lot of people, misunderstand how big the opportunity is in like businesses that other people overlook. So like obviously coaching can be a great business, but just real estate media, like a lot of people are like, Oh, it's a photography business. How much can you make? And like, I always like to challenge that mentality because like you can make as much as you can, as you want, depending on how capable you are of building a business. So I think one of the biggest mistakes business owners make or people in general is they overlook opportunity. Um, because they think it's small and they think there's better out there. So rather than getting really good at one thing and building it and learning and becoming a stronger person, more capable person, they just bounce from opportunity to opportunity and never build anything. And that's why you'll see people like get into real estate, right? Or get into like stocks or like something. And they like, they, they never make any money. Meanwhile, there's like this little photographer chugging along making, I mean, you just saw one by himself making 250 grand a year shooting real estate photos. Um, and I think that's super cool, right? I think there's a lot of hype around, um, I think I'm going to get my YouTube shut down if I cuss. I don't know how that works, but there's a lot of hype around BS and I don't like BS. I like building a business, however that works. So keep that in mind. Yeah. You should partner with Mike Rowe. Yeah. I like the clean jobs, Dave, personally. So that'll be my show. And it'd be like clean service businesses. You can do the dirty jobs, you know? <laughs> uh, um, well, I think that's it for tonight. Kenny's internet survived the whole time. That's good. I, I'm like waiting. I'm anxious. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like it's a you know last draw or something. Anyway, uh, if you guys haven't yet, I appreciate you hanging out tonight. Book a call to talk with my team if you're serious and you want us to come alongside you. We've got a great team of coaches. We have 12 full-time people on the rep team. I think a lot of people think it's just some coaching thing. Like we have a full-on business with 12 uh, people whose full-time job is helping people in our program get results. So we'd love to work with you in coaching. That starts with talking to Rod, Philippe, or Carl on my team by completing our short application and then booking a slot in their calendar. Um, like I said, we have an event next week. Every time we do an event, our calendar is destroyed for like two weeks with applications. So if you want to get in soon, go book your call right now. Um, it's free to book a call. Coaching is not free, but we guarantee you that, well, you'll see when you talk with them. We have great guarantees. We put our money where our mouth is. Um, appreciate you guys being here. Hope you got a ton of value out of that. If you want the concise version of this training, go watch my latest YouTube video. It just breaks down those five things really quick. Um, other than that, if you need anything, just DM me on Instagram at it's Eli Jones or Kenny on Instagram at it's Kenny Benjamin. And we'd love to answer your questions. Appreciate you spending some time with us on a Thursday night. Uh, I guess that's it. So we'll see you all later.